Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. We got a doozy of an episode lined up today. You're going to get yelled at and I'm going to get yelled at because we're making mistakes when we're networking. Uh, I can think of a couple of mistakes right off the top of the, right off the bat here, but we're going to pause. We're going to wait on that. We'll be yelled at in a little bit. I want to bring on my amazing guest here and she's going to unpack both her story of business success through networking, uh, business survival through COVID. So we have, uh, we got a lot to unpack here. Uh, so Faith Ann Basor, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Brandon, for having me. It's a true honor. Yeah. So I'm, we, we got to know each other a little bit before uh, we started recording here. And some of the things you were saying kind of blew my mind, uh, honestly, about how just something as simple as networking, which I think as small business owners and entrepreneurs, we, we take for granted and we don't do, we definitely don't do effectively. Um, right. But I want to hear your story of how you stumbled upon networking as an effective marketing and business growth tool. Well, thank you, Brandon. We bought a window cleaning route for my brother and we're in the Oklahoma City area and we brought we bought his route 10 years ago. And when we first purchased his route, it was largely commercial window cleaning. And when I became involved in the business, we didn't have a thousand dollar a month Google AdWords budget. But what, what we had was time. I had time. And so I started attending networking meetings and I joined a weekly networking meeting called BNI. And it was through BNI that I was able to build enough relationships and broaden, really broaden our scope of work so that when COVID came in 2020, it was, I believe that it's my networking group that kept us in business. And what I mean by that is, the very first referral that we received in my networking group was for a service that we really didn't know how to do that well. It was, can you come clean my house windows? And when we bought the route, it was largely commercial, but I didn't want to say no. Now it's easy to type, no, we don't do that to a, to a Google ad, but it's a lot harder to say no to somebody that you know that you're going to see. And I felt like I was such an, a privilege to be in this group that I was in that they'd given me the major league jersey and I wanted to live up to my jersey. So we said yes. So that was in 2018. So from 2018 to 2020, we became very good at residential window cleaning, not just commercial. And then 2020 came and oh, there was a weekend in March where our commercial business dropped about 40% over a weekend. But our residential clients were saying, are you still gonna be here on Tuesday? Which is something I would have never dreamed would, ha would have happened, but it happened. And I attribute that to my ability to build relationships and trust with really connected people in the community who then told their friends, who then told their friends, who then told their friends. And we were able to, you know, make it through those difficult, that difficult year of COVID. Yeah, that's, it's crazy too. Cause I, I, so I didn't understand it was two years prior to COVID that you started doing that. I thought it was, you know, right around the COVID time. Mm -hmm. but that's interesting how you, you were prepared for it just because of that diversification. And I think for a lot of people, I mean, don't mishear me here. Like it's not, you don't always want to diversify. Um, so let me unpack this a little bit because this is, this is some really bad advice in the marketplace that I hear a lot from other people who are in my position as consultants, coaches, whatever they want to call themselves. Um, you know, we are very specific on when our clients diversify and when they don't, and they stick to what they're best at. So mm -hmm. for you in that business in 2018, aside from the, uh, I, I guess the fear of saying no to someone you had to see over and over, which is totally okay. Um, what caused you to say, okay, maybe this is a good time to take on a totally different product line because you're right. Those two are vastly different working with commercial customers and residential customers. I imagine the invoices are much different. Uh, the routes are much different. The time spent yeah. on a project is much different. So right. how did you analyze whether this is good or bad for your business? 
Well, I, since day one of buying the route, I wanted to be, I wanted to play with the big boys. I just, I wanted to do everything that normal businesses were doing. And we didn't, my husband and I did not come to the table with a whole lot of experience as business owners. And I, again, it just goes back to the the, this, these groups, you know, I was seeing these business owners, what are they doing? Cause they were successful and it wasn't like, you know, we changed industries. We didn't become roofers. We just, we just kind of broadened and, and faced our fears. And now, you know, there isn't really much difference between commercial residential, but I'll tell you what, you know, as a window cleaner, I mean, I would say any service-based org, uh, a profession should have residential as part of their book of business because there's so much need. Um, when a commercial client, ha when things get tight, you know, if window cleaning is the first thing to go, but a residential client, if, if you're serving different clients who are retired, who already have a house cleaner, they, they're not as, um, they're not affected by these things that happen as much as a business owner would be. So we're maybe for a business owner, we're the first to go, but for that homeowner, we might be, you know, 10th to go. Like it has to get really bad before they fire us. So it was a combination of wanting to uh, be, be good at everything that we could and a combination of understanding that a, really, you know, it's almost like it's a better client for us. And, but we didn't know that because when we bought it, it was just a route. So it took the networking. It took somebody saying, I have confidence in you, Faith Ann. I think you can do this for us to say, oh, okay, well, let's try. And let's just pray <laughs> that that first one goes well. And we muddled through it, you know, but we got better. It didn't take long. And now we're, well, I'm helping people understand that it's relationships, that for networking, it's relationships. It's not about trying to pitch to everybody in the room. It's relationships. Yeah. I mean, I'm a huge proponent of saying not, not only networking, business is networking or mm -hmm. the relationships, excuse me. It's human to human. Right. We are not just there to sell stuff. We're there to build relationships and help right. people regardless of your industry. So I'm on board with this topic. Um, I remember a number of years ago, I had a, I had a local service-based business that I sold last year and that's how I grew the business was just building relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, I too went to networking events and I always, this is what I want to talk about is the mistakes. I, you could pick up the mistakes people are making, not that I've really quantified or put words to them. I know you have, you have three mistakes mm -hmm. for us, but the one that I hated the most, and I hope you talk about it <laughs> is it's always the same people. It's a real estate agent and the insurance insurance broker and they walk over and they give you their business card and that, they say if you need insurance <laughs> i'm your guy and i'm like piss off okay yes. i don't go away so faith and please what are these three mistakes we're making in networking events that was my number one was yes. passing was interrupting people's conversations to pass out your business card if you want to pass something out at a networking meeting pass out compliments pass them out like decks of cards don't pass out. Don't interrupt your your um, the people who are having a connecting with each other to say to come in in the middle of that and say, you know, I am I have such little patience and confidence in myself that the only way that you're ever going to get my card is if I interrupt you and shove it in your face. You're tr you're putting no trust in a process that works, and you're being very uh, egotistical, very short sighted, very short sighted pass out compliments instead of business cards. And I have a rule about my business cards. And this uh, this is just kind of evolved in the last six, seven months since I've been writing my blog. I don't give my business card to anybody that doesn't ask for it. Mm. Because when they ask for it, it's kind of like the proof. It's like, oh, I've connected with you on a level that you might be interested in talking to me again. Even, if when, even when they ask for it, it doesn't guarantee that they're going to want to talk to you again, but they sure there's no guarantee if you shove it in their face and they haven't even asked you for it. There's just no way that card's going to be brought. It's going to go to the trash can immediately or wherever people put cards that they don't want to talk to. So that's number one. Yeah. Don't do that. It, 
trust the process of networking more and you will be rewarded more. Yeah. I've, I, I don't want to spoil the other two. I'm not going to say what, what I think they are, but that's just a, that's a huge pet peeve for me. I actually, I want you to call me crazy here. I don't bring, I don't have business cards. I don't bring business cards. I've thrown that practice away. I don't even do the, the digital crap anymore. Mm. What I do personally is because I've noticed if someone comes up to me with a card, they want mine in return so they can mm. call me on Tuesday. Uh, right. <laughs> that's really fine. I'm not giving you my number. Um, but those are the only people that are really asking for it. My personal strategy is i schedule a meeting on my calendar. We, we have a 15, oh, 30 minute mm -hmm. coffee chat, whatever it is like, Hey, this is a hectic environment. Let's, let's have a surface level conversation. I'd love to go deep with you on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. If you're up for it, not a sales pitch, not a con sales right. conversation, just like a, Hey, one-to-one, -one, let's get to know each other. Um, so I, I personally, I've just totally done away with business cards. Um, I don't know if that's in line with your strategy or, or tip number two or three, but um, that's worked for me at least. Yeah. If you're not going to have a business card, you want to pull up a calendar. And mm -hmm. because, you know, sometimes people give us buying, buying signals and we want to make sure that we're, that we are taking advantage. If someone's interested in what you have to say, you want them, you don't want to frustrate them. So either a card or pull up your calendar right away. That's great. My dogs are okay. Um, so we love yeah. dogs here on this show. <laughs> so um, are you, right. so you ready for two. number two? Yes, two. hit me. What do you got? Okay. So number two, um, oftentimes in networking meetings, there's an opportunity for each person to stand up and say what they do, uh, talk about their business. At least in Oklahoma, that's a thing. And in BNI, you know, regionally or across the country, it's a thing. And often people want to stand up and tell the room all about the bells and whistles of their business. And I'm great. And I've been in business 20 years and it's, it's the best place I've ever worked. And it just goes, people can't remember that. So instead of trying to tout your uh, bona fides in 30 seconds, which you're never going to be able to do in 30 seconds anyway, even if you, if you gave the perfect information, 30 seconds or a minute is not long enough, tell the room who you're looking for. So in window cleaning, I often, I will say today, I'm looking for the business owner, you know, who has just moved in to a brick and mortar location and they're ordering a sign. Well, that's the perfect person for me because if they're ordering a sign, it means they're trying to get their location ready. Or I might say, I'm looking for the homeowner you know who has just hired a house cleaner. That's the perfect time for me to get in there because they're already in that mode of, okay, I'm going to hire some things out. Window cleaning, house cleaning. So we don't, if I stood up and said, we've been in business for 10 years and we've done this and we've done that and we've done that, I haven't helped the room find a referral for me. And isn't that why we're all there? We wanted referrals. So we have to help people look for that. I mean, we don't always know. I mean, and sometimes we can get so wrapped up in our own business that we think other people know all about what we would look for, but they really don't unless you tell them. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good tip too, because you're thinking like, oh, okay. Window cleaning. I know somebody who has windows. Duh. We, everyone has that's, windows. But right. that's not who you're looking for. And that doesn't help that person filter in their head. Oh, how can I help Faith Ann and her business and serve her business? Well, now I know specifically two people, what mm -hmm. they look like, what activities they're taking right now. And I can connect them with her and her business. That's awesome. I love that. Um, so number three, then what's the, what's yeah, the third number three? Thing? Okay. Now let's say, imagine you've gone to the networking meetings and you know, it's about relationships and you've, so you haven't done the icky thing with shoving business. You've, you've made true connections and you've told people how to look, what you're looking for. And now that person that you've been to three or four networking meetings with has a referral for you. So the top mistake in that situation would be not following up with a referral you receive. That's terrible because when that person is referring you, they are taking a little bit of their insides and they're attaching it to that referral. They are, they are take, giving part of their reputation away to the person that they are close with by saying, you should really call Brandon. He, he can help you with that. And if you are not as the person being referred, Johnny on the spot, as soon as that comes in, 
uh, first thanking the person who has referred you and reaching out and asking the person who's referred you, what's the best way for that person to be contacted? Don't assume that whatever the way you like to be contacted is the way that you're uh, the person referring is going to be contacted. Because what if it's the 80 year old grandmother? My guess is that the 80 year old grandmother is probably not going to want email or a Facebook message. They might want a phone call, but then a, a 21 year old uh, college student probably won't even answer the phone. You know, if they don't know who it is, they're not going to answer. So we want to, first of all, follow up. And then we want to be um, aware of the best way to follow up so that it's easy. And so that the person who gave you that referral shines, you want them to shine. Because if they can't shine, they're not going to refer you again. They're, you're going to be on a blacklist <laughs> if you don't take good care of the referrals you receive. Yeah, that's the that's the downside of of relying on referrals, right? Is like if you mess one up, well, that person who referred you is cut you off of their list mm -hmm. forever uh, yeah. because that, that's their reputation. So that's a very important principle. So tell me if you, let's say I referred you somebody, uh, you do a fantastic job for them. It comes back to me. I hear you did a good job. I want to refer more. What do you, it's like, do you have a strategy ongoing to help me continue to refer people to you or uh, do you do anything like surprise gifts or thank you letter? I'm just curious how you keep your referral network stimulated and engaged. The number one way is continuing to meet with them. You know, have one-to-one -one meetings on a regular basis. Continue to attend the same uh, uh, meetings. And then um, sometimes you can, people aren't sure how to connect. And it's okay to send them a script. Like if they just, like, you know, there's this this person. He's a decision maker at Company X. And I want to introduce you to him. This has happened. Like I would rather the person I want to refer, send me a script. Cause then I just, I just take that script and email. So it's okay to do that too, is to make it super easy for somebody to refer you. And yes, you want to, you want to nurture that relationship. And the other thing you can do is say, you know, Sally has sent me eight people in the last two months. How can I send Sally a referral? I mean, really think, like, don't wait for a referral to jump in your lap for Sally. Let's say she's a financial planner. Well, then you you actually go through your phone and you say, I wonder who I could at least talk to about Sally. How could I bring her up? Get, to, get Understand how I can find a referral for Sally who's been so generous with me. You know, that's a great way is reciprocate. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. I'm curious too, um, how do you feel about referral commissions uh, as kind of another strategy. Um, that's the one that we predominantly rely on. If someone refers business to us, we give them uh, a percentage of, of whatever business we get from them. And that's how we can, you know, say thank you, at least in the mm -hmm. short term, and then continue to support them long term too. But um, how do you feel about that? Do you use that strategy? And then also, um, is that is that the lazy method rather than sending them a referral back? Um, I think it's good to have referral commissions if you do if you do that as a company and you want to be very clear when you do that you need to be very clear about what qualifies because you don't want somebody disappointed um, you know I gave you John's number why where's my check well did John turn into a client and very specific uh, per, uh, how is that going to work specifically don't make assumptions that the person's going to know and I don't think it's lazy uh, but I think I mean, for me, you know, I would love, I'd much rather have a conversation with Sally and her tell me, Faith Ann, you've sent me so much business. I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to have a lunch. I'm going to set up a three-way lunch with you and my dad and me. Like for me, but it might be just because I'm my personality. I don't know. But that I'd rather have that than, you know, a check for 80 bucks or something. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can ask people too. I'm sure you could just say like, hey, I appreciate you sending me this. Our typical strategy is we send a 20% commission. Uh, or would you rather I introduce you to somebody? And then for you, you would say, you know what? I would love oh, an introduction. Introductions, yeah. yeah. Because the introduction, you don't know what could lead to, you know, that's right. like the golden egg, the goose, not the egg. It's That could lead to uh, many, many, many more jobs where the check is is 
it's just one time. Not, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it, I would always rather have an introduction. That's okay. I'm being lazy, but I at least <laughs> now know that I'm being lazy and I can, no. I can offer that. Uh, I can offer that option. Say, would you mm -hmm. like an introduction or referral? Would you like whatever it is? Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's fantastic. Well, Faith Ann, this kind of blew by this this conversation was amazing um went by very quickly i put your your blog on the screen um if you're listening it's also down in the show notes uh the networkers tour guide.com slash blog blog what do you what do you share on your blog i'm curious oh there's many many articles and i go into um what a new person who's terrified to network might uh find helpful all the way to um what small things that make a big difference in your networking. I, um, and then I would say the, you know, from a brand new person to like how to start your own networking group. So somebody who's seasoned, but they want to start their networking group. So there's just, there's many, many articles. It's about networking. And if you think you might, if you're frustrated with your networking efforts, peruse and see if maybe there's some things you could do some small changes to make to, to have more impact. Yeah. Small changes, big impact. I'm a huge fan of that. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. It's the last question. Uh, first of all, thank you for an outstanding interview. A um, lot of juicy information here as we promised in the beginning. So we didn't let you down. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if someone's going into a networking event um, or whatever you want it to be about this show and, and my company, you can see it behind me. If you're watching is all about questions, ask better mm -hmm. questions. You'll get better answers. Mm -hmm. What is the one question that you would offer to a listener to ask themselves to get a better result when attending a networking event? To ask themselves? Yeah. If you're, if you're walking, if I'm walking into a networking event, what should I be asking myself in my head to get a better result out of that event? I would ask myself, how can I truly connect with at least one person here? Mm. And that will guide you. If, if it's about getting a business, it's just, it can't happen in one meeting, it's never going to happen in one meeting unless, you know, your house is on fire and you're a fireman. But other than that, it's, it takes time and people have to see that you are genuine before they're ever going to hand over $1 to you. And it doesn't matter what it is. If you're not genuine and you don't care about them, they're not going to separate themselves, their money from themselves to give it to you. Amen. Such a, such a beautiful way to put it too. <laughs> Business is all about relationships that, and if you get nothing else from this episode, just stop throwing business cards at people. Please have a yes, strategy yes, and a purpose please. behind it. Right, if, right. If we could do nothing else but eliminate the business card slapping mentality, mm -hmm. then we've had a good episode here. So Faith Ann, thank you so much for being a guest on the show today. Thank you, Brandon. I had a great time. Same here. And for those of you listening, I hope you had a great time too. I hope you got a lot from this episode and you have a new strategy. You have a new outlook, at least on networking events. Ask yourself that question, throw out your business cards, except for maybe one or two to bring to each mm -hmm. event, but make sure you, wherever you are, you subscribe to this ridiculous show that is harmonious at lunch. We <laughs> love disrupting your mindset about business every single weekday. And we want to continue to do that. So you achieve your business goals in a much shorter time period. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next